So I'm talking to a friend of mine who works for one of the big national atheist organizations a little while back. And among their many jobs is coordinating with local groups to make sure that they've got funding and publicity and an online presence, et cetera. And she tells me that one of the biggest problems they face is like a, a people's front of Judeo problem where you've always got eight little groups that should be one large group, but they get caught up on leadership squabbles and minor differences in their goals. So you end up with this weird patchwork of like semi-autonomous groups duplicating the hell out of each other's efforts and competing for members. Now, to be clear, th this doesn't happen for malicious reasons. It's generally not a case of Zeno's schisms like with Christianity, where disagreements keep tearing groups asunder. Rather, it's that when atheists come home all fired up from a convention or they finish a book that boils their blood and makes them want to get involved, our tendency is to say, I should start a group rather than I should see if there's a nearby group that I can join. I see this constantly. I, I'll get emails from people saying, hey, I'm in such and such an area and I want to start an atheist meetup group. Can you help? And I'll be like, yeah, man, there's a group that's been meeting in your area for eight years. And, and I found them by Googling atheist meetups in. Right. And, and, and as a guy who like saw an ad on a bus, decided to get active and set about creating the world's 953rd atheist podcast, I, I don't know that I'm in a position to fault anybody for it. It, it might just be in our nature. It could be the inevitable outcome of a bunch of loners trying to create communities. But there is a point where you have to lay the blame squarely on the shoulders of the individual. Like, it's one thing to think I should start an atheist community instead of I should join an atheist community. It's a whole other kind of mistake to think I should start the very concept of atheist community, which is exactly what we saw from one Zishan Alim in an MSNBC op-ed this week. Now, I don't want to go too hard on the guy. He's obviously an ally, and his piece makes some very good points, but it does so from a place of such wanton ignorance that it kind of has to be called out. His, his point seems to be that you personally don't exist, so I, I, I kind of have to come to your defense here. The central question in the op-ed is, why aren't there any atheist communities that get together to do charity work? And, and even if you set aside online communities like ours, I know six of those groups in Northern Florida alone. So yeah, so the, the, the op-ed in question is called Why America Needs a New Kind of Atheism Right Now. So naturally, you can assume that Aleem did quite a bit of research on what kinds of atheism there currently are, right? I mean, he couldn't possibly just base his entire article on the personal anecdotes he has about what the atheism movement was like a dozen years ago. Right? There, there, there's no way that he get all the way to print without speaking to a single leader of a single atheist group or even apparently Googling the term atheist group. Well, yep, he, he did exactly that. And MSNBC ran with it, apparently. And to be honest, I, I wouldn't mind going through this thing sentence by sentence because he manages to get it wrong in a number of important directions. Now, to be fair, again, he gets it right in a lot of directions, too. And the overall message that atheism needs to be more inclusive is always a welcome critique. And despite their anemic relevance to the larger atheist movement today, we're still close enough in time to the hero worship of Dawkins, Hitchens, and Harris for us to be fairly saddled with criticisms of their messages and messaging. But to say that rejecting their vitriol represents a new kind of atheism is silly. Right? Like the, the whole term new atheist was coined to distinguish from the old atheism that just politely explained our worldview. Now, to, to be fair to Aleem's point, though, he's asking for more than just a return to the days of the unobtrusive atheist. He's also asking for more focus on community building and charity work. He calls his idea communitarian atheism and hopes it can counter the trend of civic disengagement that he ties to the loss of religious communities. Now, let's be super clear about what a huge fucking leap that is. Yes, people are less and less likely to be religious. And yes, people are less and less likely to belong to groups or to be active in their local communities. But Alim assumes that the former caused the latter. And I mean, that's possible to some degree, I guess, but, but it's far more accurate to say that the rise of the Internet caused both. I mean, even religious people are less likely to belong to religious communities than they used to be. Right. And, and, and people may be less likely to belong to community groups locally, but they're more likely to belong to online communities, obviously. And well, that fucking sucks if what you want is a group that gets together and runs a soup kitchen downtown on Saturday. It could be a goddamn lifesaver if what you want is a group that's accepting of your gender identity while you're living in a small religious town. It's also kind of bullshit to lay this responsibility at the feet of atheists, too. Why is this our job? 
especially right now when we're, when we're clearly in the crosshairs of the Supreme Court. Our rights haven't been under this much threat since the fucking 50s. But in between defending them, you want us to create and operate community groups, too? I mean, I'm not saying they've got it great or anything, but it's hard to imagine a liberal columnist arguing that anti-abortion groups should spend more time organizing community potlucks. And again, like we are doing all the shit that he's saying we should do, but that doesn't mean it was our job. The fact that government money gets funneled to faith groups under the guise of community programs, the fact that religious based groups elbow out secular charities by drawing from a broader national donor base, the fact that religious charities often refuse the help of secular ones, all of those things combine to make it harder on the non-religious community group than the religious one. The fact that any atheist groups persevere through all of that is downright Herculean, but apparently it's not enough for Z. Chanelene. Look, this is a message we're all used to in the atheist community. Every few months, somebody will see an argument between an apologist and like at Dick in Christ's stigmata on Twitter or something and say, well, gee, why must all of atheism be so rude? And then they're going to like deign to enlighten us on the proper way to promote our beliefs and chastise us for not reigning in at Dick in Christ's stigmata sooner. They'll say, we should have an atheist community that focuses on building up the atheist worldview instead of tearing down the religious one and think that they're the first to suggest it. But of course, we were already there. We were already doing that. What's more, the groups that were already doing that often predate the ones that weren't. Right? They, they just didn't get any media attention because atheists do good for the sake of good doesn't fit into the media narrative the way that those atheists need to stop being so mean does. I mean, I'm not saying they don't deserve more attention. I'm just saying they're not going to get it by being nice. And as evidence of my claim, I submit the fact that despite a lot of these groups being around for decades, clearly Alim has only heard about the scathing ones.